Well, welcome to my next lecture, and maybe I should almost call this the second position, which is always a win for white, but this is sort of a um, type of setup that you'll want to get if you're um, playing white, because this is always a win. And what I want to say is that you can move this position around, and you still get... Um, uh, the same result, everything but over rook pawn, and hopefully I'll cover rook pawn to the very end of this lecture. So what I want to say is that this white pawn here can actually be anywhere along the back rank, as long as the corresponding king is here. So you can sort of shift this line up anywhere. And actually what I want to show is that if this is where the pawn is, if you use this pattern, if, the, if your king can get to any one of these three squares, Think of it almost as a knight's jump with a square in the middle. If you can get to any one of these critical squares, if this is where the pawn is, um, if you're the white king, you're going to win. This is a win for you. So let's say it's um, white's turn to move. And you're saying, well, wow, you know, we can't make any progress. Uh, black has the opposition. Let's say, uh, you know, we go this way. Well, black's just going to go this way. If we move back, black's just going to move back. You're going, I don't understand how to win. We can't, black has the opposition. We actually can't get up. Well, you can. The reason is, this is the reason why you need to be, if you can get to any one of these three squares, is that because you have the pawn move. You move the pawn, and now you have the opposition, and black has to give way. So now black's going to have to move to the side, let's say it moves to this side. Now you're able just to make progress. Black's gonna um, try to stand in front of the pawn. That's the best best place for the black king. Obviously can't move the you know this square B as C six. Six is gonna try to get on the same file as the pawn. It's gonna come up. Then once again you just move back. And you have opposition, and the black king must give way. So he goes to this side. Well, then you go to this side. Okay, and now black, you know, the best thing black can do is, if it tries to come down and get the pawn, it's just going to lose. Because your king is um, going to be able to be on this side and then escort the pawn up, so the best thing black can try to do is stay on the same, because if it tries to come down, it's never going to get in front of the pawn. So, black's best chance is to come back up, and then the king comes over here with um, um, the, the opposition, and now actually it doesn't matter what side you go to, if you remember. I almost said, uh, remember, I covered a lecture where the pawn was here and it's a win. Always a win. Well, it's always a win here. Now black just goes back and forth, and you can actually just bring the pawn up. Now black just has to go to the side, and you just come to the side. Very simple. So, just going backwards. Whoops. So if this is where the pawn is, That means the three critical squares are here, here, and here. Oh, I don't know how I got yellow. But, uh, so, those are the three critical squares. So now I want to talk about uh, rook pawns. Here, let me set up the position. Here I set up the position, actually I just sort of slid the same position over to the rook pawn, where I said before this was a win for white, and then I said that it doesn't hold true for the rook pawn. Anytime you have a rook pawn, I talked about these key squares, and now the key squares, if um, it can be shown that if, if the enemy king can get to any one of these six squares, it's a draw. Basically, a lot of rook pawn um, games are drawn because the king can get to one of these six squares, and it doesn't matter where the white king is. 
it's going to be a draw. And the problem is, is that you really can't get that king out of the corner. And that's the problem with the rook pawn is that it's over in the corner, so there's less board to work with. So uh, let me show you what happens. So let's say it's white to move. Obviously, um, if it's white to move. That means the black has the opposition, and uh, we can't make headway without moving the pawn. So we'll move the pawn up, and then, you know. And now you can see the problem. The king can't go to the side. So we're sort of stuck. We go nowhere. And now we don't have the pawn, the pawn move. As you can see, that is the difficulty with the rook pawn, is that we can't make any headway here, and uh, black is going to be able to sort of sit over here because when he has the opposition, we can't go to the opposite side of the board. So really, we're never going to be able to make progress or actually get the pawn up. Let me show you a different example. Here I'm set up this position, and this looks like, wow, man, that white king is so far advanced. Um, no way white is going to lose this. Actually, this is black to move and draw. And here's the problem also with the rook pawn from white's point of view is that the king can get trapped over there and can't get out. Remember, the problem with the rook pawn is that there's less board you can. There's no other side. So here's the rook pawn. There's no file over here. There's no I file. So if white, uh, black to move and draw, black plays king to f7. And now, obviously, if white moves down, black will just come in and come over here and sit and then white can never get the black king out of the corner so the best thing that um, white can do is play h5 then the black king just goes down to f8 he wants to try to sit down here and try to sneak over into here because if white moves its king out um, great black gets in so king to uh, h8 and the king moves back. And the only good, I mean, you could shuffle back and forth, uh, but uh, that'd also be sort of a draw by repetition. So, got to make some progress. So, h6 with the pawn. Then the black king just goes back to h8. The white king goes back to h h7. King comes up. Now the king can. And then the two kings will go back, and then uh, sort of uh, white only has one move, and then black will just deliver stalemate. Now there's no move, so effectively um, black just sort of um, what they called shouldered in the king, and uh, the pawn just had to keep going up. I mean, white cannot let the black king from sort of sneaking around the back, so the king had to stay down here, but it had to sort of make waiting moves, and the pawn just came down, and, and the white king wasn't able to get out. So that does it um, with the, sort of the critical squares. So just going back, uh, just to draw on the board, so if, uh, you know, white had a pawn here, you know, and then the, the three, or let's not do that one since it seems like we always picked out. If white had a pawn here, then the three critical squares for the white king would be here and it would be a win. And if it's a rook pawn, let's say the rook pawn was here, then if the enemy king could get to any one of these six squares, it's a draw. We also show that um, the white king can also get trapped. So in my next lecture, I want to cover a couple examples um, of various king and pawn endgames just to give you some more examples. That's the end of this lecture.